I realized I didn't know a whole lot. I thought I knew a whole lot more before seminary. <laughs> I came out going, oh my. Our processional hymn, Come Now Fount of Every Blessing, hymn number 335 in your bulletin. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God of the Father Almighty, 
O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest on the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high, glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, true source of all godliness, graciously hear this devout prayers of your church and grant that those things which we ask faithfully we may obtain effectually through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Ruth, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. They lived there about ten years, and both Malon and Kilion died, so that the woman was left without her sons and her, and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown? Would, <clears throat> would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, 
Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 113, beginning with verse 1. We will read the psalm responsively by whole verse. I will begin. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all heaven, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high? He looks far down on heaven and earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> the epistle reading is from Second Timothy chapter two, <clears throat> beginning with verse one. Then you, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The same is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered the village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you. We ask that you work with us every day to help us to be more grateful for everything that you've done for us and less ungrateful. Use today's words to speak to our hearts and our minds and just help us to be more like you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So the wonderful thing that happens when we get rushed is sometimes we print out the wrong item. And so I printed out an earlier kind of my shell of my sermon, but I don't have all my notes that I put down in there, which is okay. I'm all right with that. But I think it's funny how sometimes we're tested, right? And I seem to be tested a lot. <laughs> But today's sermon is on your faith has made you well. Last week we had a wonderful sermon from Bill Locke on, on Luke 17, and he was talking about the temptations to sin and the unworthy servant. And one of the things that he said that's in the good news haunted me all week long. Haunted is kind of a strange word, but it kept on prompting me, prodding me, and I thought, you know, Holy Spirit, you know, are you, you know, are you telling me something? What are you telling me about this? And that action was, we're unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. And when I heard those words, I thought, oh my goodness, you know, Lord, we're unworthy servants. I am an unworthy servant, and I have only done what was our duty, or have I? Have I done my duty with all the distractions that we have every day, every week? Did I even do my duty? Did you do your duty? Or are we even more unworthy servants? And I'm not trying to make us sit there and, and get depressed about our walk with God, but I think it's important to ask ourselves, did I give God everything? Or did I only give God a portion of what I have? Have I saved back more for myself or is everything God's? And what are we talking about with everything? I mean, I've heard people at work, and I've even said it myself. Well, I used to give 110%, not in church work, but I'm saying at my, my regular job, right? I used to give 110%. I gave everything. I'd drop everything. I'd go to work. I'd get online, and I'd do all this work. And am I doing that for God? Am I doing that for my employer? 
or I am, am I only giving them a portion of what they are paying me for? Am I a good servant? Or am I a lazy servant? Because I think sometimes as Christians, we do get lazy. And we have lots of excuses about why we couldn't do that, or I couldn't pray, or I couldn't watch and pray like the disciples. I fell asleep when Jesus specifically said, watch and pray. So when you think about your life and your duty to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, it's important for us to remember that God owes us nothing. We owe God everything. And as we ponder this this week, how much of everything are you giving to God? And the human being screams out, but, but what do I have to give? I mean, you remember as well when Jesus was, was there and said, enter in my faithful servant when you fed me, when you clothed me, when you visited me. Are we doing all those things for God? Your life, everything. Let's take a poll. Not really, I don't want to see a, a show of hands, but who can raise their hand and say, honestly, I have given you everything, God. All my strength, all my mind, all my heart, my total soul. What about your spouse? Have you given your spouse to the Lord? Or maybe your potential spouse? And no, this is not a time for us to say, well, maybe I'll upgrade and I'll give that spouse to the Lord. The Lord has given you a spouse, has blessed you with a spouse, but how often do we look at that and go, oh, I'm blessed with my spouse? Or do we think, man, that spouse moans at me, groans at me, has a honey-do list that's longer than my arm, and is never happy with me? Or do we thank God for what he's given us? What about your children? Have you given them to God? Your home, your car, your wealth, your job, your president, you know, that's always... A tricky one. Oh, it's not my president is, is the most, most popular saying that I've heard in the last few years. Not my president. Oh, well, no, it is our president. And it's the one that God has allowed to be in charge. And I'm not just talking about Joe Biden. I'm talking about Donald Trump. I'm not talking about any of the presidents that we've had. Any president. Any king, because the Bible says that we're to pray for our president pray for the people that he's allowed to be in control because he is in control or do we groan and moan and mumble are we ungrateful about what god is allowing to occur or are we praising god and thanking god for whatever trials tribulations that we see are we smarter than God? You know, we're not even close, right? But do we rely on God? Do we praise God? Do we ask forgiveness when we fail God because of being an unworthy servant and only doing our duty if that? So again, I'm going to ask you to think about how much of everything you're giving to God. When I think about it from my own standpoint, and we pray prayers every week, forgive us for the things that we've done. Forgive us for the things that we've left undone. How many things have we left undone? And are those things more grievous to God than the things that we've done. Rate yourself one to ten on how well you, no one else, but on what you have accomplished. Because a lot of times we like to go, oh, well, you know, let me look at Sean, and I'm going to rate Sean because it's more fun for me to rate Sean than it is to rate myself. 
But that's not fair, right? That's kind of a judgmental thing. And God says for us not to judge, or by the measure we judge, we will be judged. But judge yourself, honestly. Look at yourself, reflect on yourself, because that's the person that matters in this relationship with God. And relationship is the key. If you have a relationship with God, you talk to God. You walk with God, and you give God the things that he's commanded that he would like us to do. Today's gospel reading in Luke, Jesus heals ten lepers, but only one comes back to praise and thank God. You know, at first I thought about this. I thought, oh, come on. That's got to be the service. That's the, that's the one I'm preaching on. Ten lepers. Jesus heals them. What am I going to say? And I think the Holy Ghost said, Mike, you're not going to say anything that I don't want you to say. <laughs> it reminded me. And I said, okay, thank you, Lord. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? Jesus cleanses ten lepers. There's a lot here. This time, this miracle was different than other miracles. And I had to start thinking about miracles. I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wanted to see Jesus get some dirt and spit in his hand and rub it into a mud pie and put it on the eyes and say, now open your eyes and you're healed. Now, that was interesting. It kept my attention, and especially in a world today where we want to be entertained. Ha! That's kind of funny. But this time he didn't do that. He didn't touch them. He didn't lay hands on them. He didn't even pray for them. He just said, take yourselves to the priest. Because at this time, in this day, the priest was the one that said, oh, you're a leper, you need to, by law, stay away from anybody, and you must announce yourself when you're coming into an area that there may be people, you know, watch out, I'm a leper, I'm a leper. And then I thought about COVID. Oh, no. Preacher, don't talk about COVID. COVID, we were quarantined. We were kind of like lepers, right? We were told, stay away from everybody. Don't go to work. Work from home if you can. We'll pay you not to work. Don't go over there, the vaccinated, the non-vaccinated. And we had people talking really horrible about those that didn't want to get vaccinated or the ones that got vaccinated. And it really divided us. And it made us feel like lepers. But in this story, in the good news, even though the law required the lepers not to mingle, the ten lepers were there at a distance, and there is Jesus, and they had heard the stories about Jesus, and they said, cried out with a loud voice, which is wonderful because Luke is the one that uses that a lot, right? And they cried out with a loud voice. Jesus, have mercy upon us. Jesus, have mercy upon us. We say that every Sunday too, right? Lord, have mercy upon us. And we say that because we are unworthy servants. And we know we're unworthy servants, but we come here to get right with God. We come here to say, God... I praise you, I thank you, I failed you, have mercy upon me, forgive me. And he's faithful to forgive us. And the lepers are crying out to Jesus to do something, and Jesus said, go to the priest and show yourself. Can you imagine if you were one of the ten and you're like, wait a minute, what about the spit mud pie? What about the touching? What about anything? I just go. And the lepers went. And their faith made them whole or well. 
So they took themselves, and some people that when I was studying said that the one, the Samaritan, came back, but the other nine disappeared. So nine out of ten never came back to thank and praise God. But they were healed. Went back into their life. They forgot about. They were not grateful. Well, maybe they were grateful. Hey, I'm back in society. I can do what I want. I can go home to my family and my kids. And I'm not going to be shunned. And people aren't going to run from me. And say horrible things about me. And cast me away like a quarantine. Now, they didn't really have a quarantine. But it sure sounds like one to me when you can't do what other people are doing. But their faith had made them well. But how ungrateful not to come back and to praise God. I mean, don't you think if you had leprosy and you were shunned in a society and you couldn't do the things you used to do and you were healed and the priest said, oh, yep, you look good, you're Sores are gone, you're, you're whole. Go back and be you. That you would go back to Jesus Christ and you would fall on your face like the Samaritan and praise God. And the Samaritan, as an example for us, is a great example because hey, he wasn't a Jew. He wasn't one of us. He was ah, maybe a half-Jew. Maybe he wasn't Jewish at all, just a Gentile. But isn't it funny how God uses the good Samaritan to make us think about how we would respond as the priest who crosses over, oh, I can't get my vestments dirty. Or as the other people that turned a blind eye, that didn't look at him, and yet the one who is considered unclean goes and does what we should do as Christians. And in this story, came back and praised God and fell on his face and thanked God in a grateful way for what he had done. Your faith has made you well. Well, how much faith do you have in what Jesus or what God or the Holy Ghost puts on your heart and asks you to do? Do you have enough faith to do it, or do you sometimes question it in your mind? Hmm, it can't be God. There's no way I can do that. Or is your God big enough to do all things? Is your God big enough to heal you today? For God is the creator of the universe, and our God knew us before the foundations of the world and created the world and was able to bring Jesus into human flesh through a virgin and rescue the Jewish people from the Egyptians and all of the different stories or roll away the tombstone. How big is your God? How big is your faith? Because the faith of a mustard seed is what we're looking for to be able to move mountains, the Bible says. My favorite faith story is the woman with the blood issue. Another unclean in the blood cultures. Nothing could be done and she sees Jesus in a, in a crowd, and she goes, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And she reaches out and touches the hem of Jesus' garment, and Jesus said, who touched me? Jesus knew exactly who touched him. And your faith has made you well. But the examples that we have in all of these good news stories are so precious because it is about us as well and about our faith and what we have in Jesus Christ and in our spiritual walk with God. We have not because we ask not. 
how big is your faith and how big is your God? And is your God capable of doing what he says he will do? In the gospel, then one of them, when he saw Jesus, or saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Jesus healed ten, and only one returned. Only grateful Christians are able to grow in their understanding of God's grace. Have you ever taken the gratefulness for yourself? Well, God wasn't moving fast enough, obviously. I did this on my own strength, my own mind, initiative. Have you been like the nine that were ungrateful? Or are you the one that's always grateful? Then Jesus answered in verse 17. Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. There's a couple of things that we need to do as Christians, and that is to give God acclamation, the thanks and praise. And it says, even in the psalm this morning, when, when in the third verse, it says, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. We say every Sunday or, or thereabout at the end of our service, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Or do we say, ah, thanks be to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we really thinking about the words that we say every Sunday? Because those words are to prepare us, to help us understand our faith, to help us understand what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to be doing for God. Blessing God, acclamation, giving thanks to God for everything that we have, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the trials, the tribulations. Are we a joyful servant? Are we giving our master, God, everything? Are we holding back for ourselves as an unworthy servant? Thanksgiving is important, but all also contrition, right? Contrition is what we have to do when we come every Sunday is to say, God, I failed you. I know I've been praying for a long time. Take this sin away from my life. Take this temptation away from my life. Forgive me, and I'm going to do better this week. And maybe we fail again. But the act of contrition and coming before God and saying, please forgive me. And when we pray, it should be this way too. It should be, bless the Lord. Forgive me for my sins. And I'm thankful for everything that you've given me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then we ask that if it's in God's will, when we pray, not my will, Lord, your will. I want this because I'm human and I'm a little bit selfish. Sometimes our prayers are a little selfish, but are you praying for his wisdom? Are you praying for his patience? Because I didn't realize how patience is one of those that people will say, don't pray. Whatever you do, don't pray for patience. Because God will answer that prayer. Pray for his wisdom. Pray for his eyes, his heart, his mind. And pray that you're able to see other Christians the way 
that God sees them with the covering of Jesus' blood. You ever think about that? God cannot look at you as a sinner, but he can look at you with the covering of Jesus' blood because he sees the finished product. He sees Jesus' righteousness, Jesus' holiness, not ours, because ours is what? The Bible tells us filthy rags. Oh, come on. I've got to be better than just filthy rags, the stuff that I do for you, God. It's what God does through you that's important. It's what God has done for you. And as we look at other people this week, look at them through God's eyes. Let God change them. But you have to be a proponent to pray for them, to lift them up. Do you lift up your families, your spouse? You know, sometimes it's hard to pray for people that make you angry sometimes. And there is truth. I make my wife angry a lot. I hope she's praying for me. I hope I'm praying for you. I hope you're praying for me. Because we all need prayer. We all need to be thankful. We all need to be joyful. Because what we've been given through God, God gave us, God chose us, we didn't choose him. And again, before the foundations of the world, which is so precious, because he knew us before we came to earth. And we're given to our families. And can you say I was blessed with my family because it did make you into who you are today and your testimony, whether it was a horrible experience. Are you joyful for that experience? Can you use that experience or can God use that experience through you to bless other people? Your health, your physical ability, your mental ability, all the talents that God has given you, are you using those to bless the Lord? Or are you using them ungratefully to bless yourself? And this week, we think about those ungrateful nine. And we try to become more grateful to God for what he's given us and that he loves us. And I think that'll help us to have a better walk with Jesus Christ in a relationship, not a religion, a relationship with God who knows each and every one of us intimately. Amen. And as we say the Nicene Creed together, let us confess our faith in words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, buried, And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life who proceeded from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. 
and I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ, church, and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. We beseech thee also so to lead the nations of the world into the ways of righteousness and so direct and dispose the hearts of all our leaders, especially Joe Biden, our president, and Michelle Lujan Grisham, our governor, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may truly and impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to our, our archbishops, even, uh, excuse me, <laughs> holy, our archbishop, Stephen, our bishop, Pete, our priest, Bill, our deacon, and Michael, our assistant priest, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. For Christ the King, we pray for an associate rector to be identified and called for service. We pray for a youth leader and a youth leadership team to start restart our Sunday youth group. We pray for additional teachers and helpers for Queen's Cup kids. Lord, in thy mercy. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations and strengthen us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, we give thanks for our missionaries. Especially we give thanks for Life Twist, bringing Christ's message of a future and hope to at-risk young people in New Mexico. Meredith Allman, a missionary in Mexico with SAMS, the Society of Anglican Missionaries and Senders and Young Life in Albuquerque, a mission devoted to introducing adolescents to Jesus Christ and helping them to grow in their faith. Guide them, O Lord, and give them boldness to serve thee. Lord, in thy mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Especially Paula, Dee, Lena, Beverly, Jonathan, Wayne, Bill, and others we now name before thee. Lord, 
Lord, in thy mercy. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants who have departed this life in thy faith and fear, that they will for them there will be that thy will for them be fulfilled. And we beseech thee to grant us such grace so as to follow the good examples of thy servants, and that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, grant these prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and earn love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, to go on there with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling as Abel. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and our heart heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, of his great mercy, hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord, I should say, please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Um, if you haven't picked up the latest issue of The Messenger, it is on the table in the narthex. Most importantly, the office will be closed tomorrow. Uh, Westside Potluck and Discussion Group will meet this, Sunday, uh, Sunday, meet this Wednesday on October 12th. There should be maps in the back. Um, Christ the King is hosting a statewide women's retreat on Saturday, October 29th uh, with Bishop uh, Stephen's wife Trish as the main speaker. Uh, registration information is on the Narthex table. And Kairos will return to the men's prison in Santa Rosa on October 27th through the 30th. And there are prayer cards available on the table in the Narthex.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, Lord Tzai. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient Sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thine almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and to sanctify with this word and Holy Spirit these gifts of creatures of bread and of wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and his passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, the memorial of thy Son, which he has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same, and looking for his coming again in power and great glory. And here we offer and present unto thee, our, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may be worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. All men. The gifts of God are for the people of God.
please join me in the post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us hereby of thy favor and goodness, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost all honor, glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you and all you love and pray this day. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is the church one foundation found in your bulletin on page 15, 491.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.